Hey guys, it's Terry here from Money Matters for Everybody, and today I'm joined by Tim. Hello. Actually, I'm sorry, I should have said, hey guys, this is Tim and Terry from Money Matters for Everybody. Hopefully you're having a good week. Um, so there's a couple of videos that I'm re-recording because I did them previously without you. And I did receive some feedback that apparently I'm very much more colorful when you're when you're involved in the conversation. So thank you for that. So today I want to talk to you about tithing. Can you talk about oh, tithing? you want me to? No. <laughs> Give it a moment. Um, so sometimes I feel like tithing. Um, I was growing up in the church. I always kind of was raised that. I always heard um, from one of my family members, oh, the church is always asking for money. Right. And so we would give a quarter. Um, when we went to church as kids, we would give a quarter, right? Your little giving envelope. Um, today, the envelope has probably cost more than the quarter it's inside of it. Um, but I don't feel as though growing up that I was really taught about tithing. Do you? Well, in the church, in the church, uh, not that I can remember. I mean, granted, when I was a kid, I wasn't oftentimes paying attention, paying attention too much uh, yeah. during mass. But uh, but now that we're adults and, and we've been on our own faith journeys, um, we've come to appreciate the that tithing is not so much about the money itself it's about showing your trust in god and that um believing him um trusting him trusting that knowing that he's got know, your back when he's he says in scripture you bring me your, your 10 percent and watch how i bless the, the remaining 90 um i remember a uh, a sermon at church where um we were told that it's pretty much the only time in the Bible where God outright issues a challenge. You know, if you don't believe me, try it. Yeah, that's interesting. So I think that, um, so I guess it was later in our life where um, I came to the realization or so you learn. So the act of learning, when you learn something, it's where your head and your heart are connected, right? right. And you come to the realization that something that is true. So it was about, I don't even know the year. It was the spring of 2016 <laughs> when, uh, when, when we, we, uh, we were going through some things and I think even before that though, like we realized that we were called to tie. Right. Okay. Yeah. We, we, we couldn't afford to because of we were in debt. We were in debt. We had, we had child care care bills. Yeah. And um, through um, through the child care uh, bills um, being taken away. Um, it's an interesting way to say it. <laughs> well, we were no longer yeah. paying for child care. So yeah. um, we were then in the position where we could start tithing. Um, yeah, yeah. Start tithing and... Mm -hmm. um, be able to to take God up on that challenge of seeing what happens with the rest, and God has really blessed the remaining ninety percent over and over again. Uh, yeah, and I think that that was the key. So Tim had alluded to, and I I think we've been very transparent in that we've had some challenges with our youngest. He's a brilliant human being, um, but behaviorally, he was just a very challenging child. And truth be told, at the end of the day, I think looking back, like years later, he just wanted to be home. He just wanted to be with his mom and his dad. I think he knew that we were working from home and I think he wanted to be here. And while it's a very difficult um, situation, ultimately he was released from four daycares, like essentially. Yeah. And the fourth one, we were like, we're, we're done. And we basically set an expectation that he would come home, that he would be in this structured routine because mom and dad were working and he was fine with it. He completely like, so he completely fell in line with it. Right. He wanted to be home. He wanted to be with mom and dad. So we had lined up, this is a sidebar, I think, right? We had lined up for when he went to kindergarten that we had all the plans in place because it was 
because of the, I we, think that we were teacher, expecting the, the same result when yeah. he went back to school. And I think the kindergarten teacher was horrified. Like she was mortified about some of the things what we were setting we her up for. School. And he went into school and there was not one issue, not one. So, and that was probably God working too as right. well. Absolutely. But when Ryan was released from his last daycare, instead of being hurt, and angry and resentful and frustrated and all of the bad things we were grateful that we could turn around and start tithing yeah and then uh, uh from there like i said uh, little things here and there uh, surprise check from old jobs we talked about that, that as well uh, had showed up uh, a time where we were asked to give at Christmas time to a community in need, right? An organization in need. And we didn't have money in the budget for it. Like we had, we were getting out of debt and we had all of our dollars were accounted for and we were asked to give and we prayed about it. And I carried that list around and I told him like, you know, like, I mean, there was such a huge need and then praying about it. And then a check arrived in the mail that covered almost exactly that amount. We were looking to spend about a hundred dollars on this, on this list, and a hundred and twenty dollar check arrived. Exactly. So, so yeah. So when you hear people talk about tithing, the initial reaction is, "Oh, they just want my money," mm -hmm. but it's a lot more than that. Uh, it's showing your faith, showing your trust, and uh, if you give god that first 10 percent, you'd be amazed by what happens with the rest what he does with the rest yeah and i've oftentimes said it's not a it's not a head thing it's a heart thing right where your heart is and jesus talked about money more than anything else in the bible i believe that's correct at least more than the it was one of the top things he talked about with right. money because he knew that money Yes, money can be the root of all evil, but it can also be the root of so many incredible things. Yeah. If you had the opportunity, if you ever had the opportunity to give money away, I have never regretted giving. No. I have struggled with the times when we were asked to consider giving. And I would say, we will take it back, back in prayer, right? We'll take it back and we'll pray about it. And I've had we've been asked to give and we thought... I don't know if we can let's see if we can fit it in like what can we do well, now we've become to a point of yes we do have surplus so yes we can give how much should we give right. and praying about it and ironically oftentimes we land on the exact same number and we're praying separately not necessarily together about what we should give right and it's, it's amazing how many times that has happened that yeah so i think that ultimately i hear people say like um I, the complaints about money churches don't run on for free right. <laughs> okay church in the church community they don't run on like rice and beans well actually they probably do in the grand right. scheme of the scale of the budgets yeah. that they're asked right. to operate on but i feel as though it's not it's not it's it's a hard thing it's not you can yeah. disobey you don't have to tithe like you Completely don't have to tithe, but I know for us personally, if we weren't being trusting in in giving 10% away, um, we would be missing out on a lot of blessings. Absolutely. And I don't, I, I think that's the very start, right? Yeah. You make money, you spend money, you, money is very important to all of us. Um, but I think that you have to, you have to have trust. And if you don't have trust, then, then you have nothing. You have nothing. Right. Um, you can't be a Christian and skip that part of your life. Yeah. It's, uh... So there was something else I was thinking about as well, and I just completely lost it, which happens all the time. I mean, yeah. that's just kind of normal <laughs> for me. Um, talking about money and how it just kind of, um, when you give that first 10% away. And I honestly, that's a separate video, but talking about how like basically we live off of like 50% of of our income and that's where we're at we try to live off of 50 percent so that we're saving for the future we're giving money but we're definitely doing our tithing or giving more 
um, as appropriate and being in a position to just kind of bless others along the way, I think is a, a huge yeah. Yeah. advantage. Um, and you never, you see things differently when you trust and you believe and you give anything else. No. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. Great. So hopefully we've at least inspired you that uh, it's not about the money. It is about your heart. And that if you do trust, hopefully you will see the same things that we have seen witnessed over and over and over again. So many blessings that have come back and opportunities, things that just don't make sense, right? So um, maybe cars running a little longer. Maybe that's why my car hasn't required right. a lot of maintenance. Um, maybe heat pumps that run a little longer, maybe refrigerators that run a little longer than you'd like them to because you really would like to replace them, but they run a little longer anyway, or things that just kind of, you just are able to get by. Right. And um, the next step though, for us personally, is we're looking to maybe turn into um, investing in real estate. If you can be trusted in the little things, you can be trusted in the bigger things. So hopefully we provide you with a little bit of help, hope, inspiration, and hopefully you have a good day. Bye, everyone. Bye.